Now church, if you were to look in the Bible, there are many examples of divine mentors. Many. But I went into the concordance to look for the word mentor in the scriptures, I couldn't find one. But I saw the concept. The concept of mentoring is very evident from the beginning to the end. When I say beginning and end means the Bible. The pages of the scriptures. I noticed that the concept of mentoring is evident all over. The lives of mentors and mentee. The people are receiving the mentoring. But the word mentor, I couldn't find it. To do a concordance, do a study on it. I want to show you a scripture, maybe just to open up your mind. It's taken from Proverbs 27 verse 17. It says here, as iron sharpens, sharpens iron, so one man sharpens and influences another through discussion. In this con uh, context here is discussion. But influences another. Another scripture that's found in Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 and 10, Two are better than one because they have more satisfying return for their labor. But if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But oh, to him who is alone when he falls and does not have another to lift him up. You'll find the process of mentoring. There'll be two parties. The mentor and the mentee. The mentee is a receiver. M-E-N-T-E-E. -E -E. Mentee. If you do it together and you walk with God with this mentoring process, like what the scripture says, you can always lift each other up. It's always the mentor will lift the mentee when he's down. And it's very powerful. And you find that in the Bible, from the beginning of time, you can see in the life of Moses, I can even go back but let's start with Moses. Moses with Joshua. You can see that Moses mentored Joshua very well. The reason why the time came when Moses died, immediately Joshua took over the reign and led the people of God into the promised land. Well mentored. And Joshua began to step in and God is using him mightily thereafter. And you find that even Moses, he did a, a mentoring on a group basis. Mentoring the 24 elders. Because too much was already split. You know, reigning over a group, a nation, and too many things were on him. And suddenly, he seek God and say, God, am I to handle all these affairs of people? God said, no. You don't do that. You get some people, the elders. Get them. And we found that in the Bible, 24 of them were roped in and then they all were given due authority and they were mentored by Moses and they become great leaders who took over and they lessened the burden of Moses. We find that Eli and Samuel, they were priesthood. They were priests, both of them, and uh, the senior Eli mentored Samuel to become a great priest in his time. Mentoring is a one-to-one -one basis. We talk about discipling, sometimes it's collective. But mentoring goes beyond that. It becomes very personal. That we build a relationship with that individual and over time it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. We build somebody we're going to see today at length. We're going to open up some things for you. Let's talk about the New Testament. We are talking about the Old Testament quite often today. But before that, we can't miss out Elijah and Elisha. And they were not son, father and son. Eh? They were two different individuals from different families. But we can see that element of mentoring where Elisha will receive the mantle. When Elijah took off, Elijah did not die. In the Old Testament, the one person never died physically is Elijah. God just simply took him off. Of course, Enoch as well. Okay, Enoch in the, I will call the first world. 
in the law in this position of the law Elijah did not die and God took him off in the whirlwind the saw and uh, Elisha was waiting eagerly to receive the mantle from his senior and we can see during the time span Elijah mentored Elisha Elisha became a great prophet great prophet you remember the story about Naaman getting healed from leprosy that guy Elisha very astute very strong guy exactly like Elijah mentored him and became a great prophet in the time of the reign of king Ahab and so forth so much about Elisha in the new testament you find Paul mentoring Timothy Titus Silas personal he took them as his own spiritual children as a child in the faith personal interest mentoring spending a lot of time with Timothy because he knew that he will move on and he need to pass the baton to the next one and this are the faithful one that each god gave him or he chose them to himself and he spent a lot of time mentoring Timothy Titus and you can see they all became great leaders who were able to step in because i believe Paul's shoes very big to step into that shoe he got to be well mentored and he did very well and you can find that Barnabas is also a mentor also known as the son of encouragement because one of the characteristics of a mentor will be a person who encourages we will see later and you found that Barnabas was able to mentor Mark and we know the story when we did the book of acts you know uh we know paul is a short fuse guy he got worked up because mark let him down in one of the missionary journey he didn't want to follow them and when the turn came he said no you're not coming with us now discarded him but barnabas took him in took mark in and said no it's okay i will guide you and he mentored him and the the gospel of mark was written by this guy This is a kind of a mentoring that he received from Barnabas. He never gave up on Mark. He turned Mark around to become a great author of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mentoring is very powerful church. And of course I can go on and on there are many more I believe in the New Testament Peter had mentored people. And so you find that at the towards the end of the every epistles you find greetings where they make mention of certain names one siphorus erastus so many names theophilus these are all mentees people who have been taught by them and they leave a legacy behind and trusting it to them and it takes a lot of time and effort to mentor somebody now church what is divine mentoring today our title is divine mentoring So I told you that it involves people. It's a process. Do you know that there's a worldly mentoring as well? Very rampant, widely used, whether it's politics, whether it's in uh, sports or entertainment, trades. You find that sometimes you notice that the father or the grandfather is a politician, a minister or a, 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 a member of parliament many a time you can find the son will take over or even a grandson will also follow the path like the kennedys and in america and even in malaysia even in the spec of uh, entertainment great singers great dancers somehow you can see their offsprings their children or grandchildren take the same kind of a lifestyle because over time because they are exposed and this person mentors them they give their life and impart to them whatever they have learned and acquired imparting to the next one the world does that in every sports as well we can see most of the time so and so and then the son or grandson becomes also a sportsman and become the best in that field because they were well mentored because they got first hand teaching and guidance it could be their 
parents someone that's very close uncle so even in the world even in the office management level a big companies will mentor somebody to take over the reign of the company so they can manage and take the company a big company like a, a conglomerate or a consortium they've got so many employees so the top guy he knows that he got to move on you've got to pass on and sometimes you will mentor people so that they can take over there will be stability in the company the leadership changes there's no successor the whole company can collapse these are secular worldly people mentor they mentor they take personal interest not many they pick one or two which they know this is a guy this is the person and they spend a lot of time it's a process sharing all their life being very transparent before them telling them exactly what's the condition how we can take further what are we doing where are we going where are we heading it's mentoring passing all the secrets and all the things in the same token in the spiritual world god also does the same thing jesus mentored his disciples he is the chief mentor Jesus Christ the master mentor you can see the three years of his ministry he took time to be with them spent a lot of time sleeping eating doing things together with them taking them together wherever he goes so this mentoring is something that is a close intimate relationship and the lord knows that he will die at the cross and go back to heaven where he came from but before he goes back he did a marvelous work in 12 of them where they took the gospel to the world very well mentored we don't hear so much about the other guys the 12 disciples but very the inner circle we can see like john james peter this is the inner circle even in the 12 the inner circle three and even in the three the one that really drew very close was john it's very evident in the bible you can see that jesus took personal interest in john always very close as i remember the time when uh, uh, jesus said that uh, one among you will betray me then they all like who is that huh? they all what, what they did they all looking at john what is he talking about they all know john will know <laughs> you look at the bible all of them are looking at different why why is who is the guy they know john will know i'm sure the lord has spoken to john about it over prior to that because that that's a kind of you're mentoring somebody you share your heart you share everything share your life you invest in them that's a dividend it pays off this investment is very very powerful it goes a long way father mentoring the son physical parents we have got a responsibility to mentor our children yeah we teach them many things but you must take personal interest to mentor spiritually and we're going to see what actually qualifies us to become an effective mentor if you ask me personally church is my personal observation i realized over the time in this gospel that the effectiveness of one's conversion or even their growth over time in the spiritual life in this gospel had always been because they have somebody to mentor them i can see it. it's not an off kind of one off thing where you just preach the gospel and then after that it's so platonic there's no real no no it doesn't work this gospel doesn't work you must stick with that person spend time with the person and you must engage with the person and you must there's the element of really spending time that's how that conversion will be genuine and more than that if you have got people already saved and god put them under your leadership to mentor them you spend time with them over time i tell you you can turn them around you can turn them around you can see that you are able to lead them to that place but we need mentors we need mentors in this church the all of us will play our role to mentor that that process of mentoring the divine mentoring will become part and parcel of a christian faith is basically like this 
Mentoring is when someone who has been there and done that take someone who is getting there and doing that under their wings. Because you are able to show them what has been done and what you have already accomplished and you are doing and you are leading them in the same path so that they too can acquire the knowledge and know exactly I'm talking about spiritual here. I'm not talking about politics and sports and entertainment. No, no, no. I'm talking about spiritual mentoring or divine mentoring. This is my focus today. And uh, who can be a divine mentor? No, I want you to know church that age is not the criteria. It's the experience. When I say experience, it's a spiritual experience of that individual who have walked with God. You may be old, but your experience with God may be very little. But it can be a young person, but over time, because you are always engaging and walking with the Lord, you grew. And you have grown over time to take that position as a mentor. So it's not the age. And of course, in this church, in this church, you will recognize that you got to be born again first. If you are a born again person, have the indwelling Holy Spirit, then you qualify to become a mentor. And of course, that qualification is in condition with your maturity. You know, if you are immature, you can't mentor somebody. God will not want to use you because immaturity leads to a lot of complication, confusion. So maturity will become part of the requirement. Then you are born again. You have the indwelling Holy Spirit. You have experiences with Christ up and down. You have gone through the mountain moments and the and the valley moments. You've gone through it all to the mill. Now you can become a mentor. You can start in your home. Mentoring your children, learning the trade, doing it at the church level. We all got to rise up. We got to take somebody under our wings. I think that's where God is taking us. We all meditated. We all matured over the months. The time has come for us to do the mentoring. This is what reigning in Christ is all about. We got to take that challenge. Some of you are looking at me, am I the person? I, I feel like I'm a mentee. Some of them always want to be the mentee. The mentee is the receiving end. People always want to be mentored. No, we want to mentor. We want to mentor somebody. Even an unbeliever, you take them into your wings and you want to lead them to Christ. The conversion over time. Get them saved. Clean them up. Feed them. Wash them up. Clothe them. Be with them. And over time, I tell you, they will grow. And that's your baby. You can take ownership of them and you can declare, this is my baby. I've given birth to this baby of mine in the spirit. Oh, what a joy. What a privilege. Because that is life changing. It's very powerful because you never know that person can rise up to do great exploits for Jesus Christ. So this element of mentoring, divine mentoring, is not like an apprentice where you teach them skills. The world also, like apprentice, they will take them somebody in, like an intern, and then they will mentor the person to take over that position. Sometimes when somebody is uh, moving on, so they bring in an intern and teach the person all the trade, what's supposed to be done, mentoring them over one year, six months. We are not talking about that. In the divine mentoring, is more of shaping them, modeling them over time to become more like Jesus. That's the mentoring process here. We are very targeted. We know exactly, very targeted. In the sense where, if I have become more and more like Jesus, spiritually speaking, so I'm able to now mold, shape, transform to make that person become more and more like Jesus. Spiritual mentoring is basically shaping somebody like Christ, like modeling them to become like Jesus. 
divine mentoring are you with me church are you following me church so there's a tremendous expectation you know when you look at the life of jesus i like this quotation from luke 6:40 he says this a student is not superior to his teacher but everyone after he has been completely trained will be like his teacher are you with me when you are teaching you are a student the student can never be superior than the teacher god will always spiritual teachers god will always give you more than the student so that he can always be a teacher to guide them and that student cannot be superior over the teacher but that student when is completely trained jesus is saying can become the teacher now of course we have only one teacher rabuni jesus christ who is in us the teacher as the holy spirit and you united with him and we are who are born again who mature ourselves in the faith we all can become mentors we can teach we can guide we must step out and let that which is in us to be manifested in our spiritual life this serving because why that's growth and i believe jesus christ did it very well and he discipled 12 of them they all became great teachers of the word because he was the the teacher and he taught them well to become very well trained and i told you that it took a lot of time and i would say largely the effectiveness of mentoring is relationship building and relationship is not easy particularly to start up a relationship that's the most difficult part and then after starting the relationship you got to spend time with that person and then you got to be very you got to respect them for who they are and they must respect who you are as well and let me say this that mentors are not perfect we expecting a perfect mentor there's no mentor spiritual mentors who are perfect there's none we have our own shortcomings and failing as long as you have the flesh we have it but yet you also teach the mentee that even in that moments how do you overcome because they just need to they just can't just know about the positive part of you they need to know that your weakness as well because they can also know how to overcome because they will have it as well so you teach them everything about you you are very open to them very transparent this building relationship don't try to be an hypocrite or try to put on and cover put a mask put a plastic face try to act like you are such a wonderful person that nothing is wrong with you no 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 just be yourself be transparent let people know who you are i speak about myself so we will say why always talk like that pastor why always say you are rotten you are this and that you were like that yeah yeah i was a rotten person i don't hold back without christ i'm a rotten person nothing good about me i'm very open about it but in christ i'm an anointed servant of god amen i can serve jesus amen i can lead you to the kingdom of god amen. we talk about those things amen. so we we don't hide one part of us and try to mentor somebody no no that person will become just like you let me share some things i just share share <laughs> let me just share something you know you know about jesus i observe before i get to the five very brief points or some of you five or you <laughs> don't worry okay very very brief today five points are going to be so brief just some effective characteristics that help a mentor now church throughout jesus ministry on earth I find this you know Jesus knew when he was ministering to people he knew one thing that people like to adopt when he mentored them they like to adopt their attitude their behavior their kind of ideas what is that when we take time eh, and willing to spend time with somebody to mentor whether in the worldly kind of mentoring even the divine mentor people like and then over time they will start adopting your attitude adopting your behavior pattern your ideas over time i've seen it and jesus knew that human beings like that like to ape 
if somebody you can see why today trends and fashions and air style and the footballers they just go and chop something here and chop here put a cross here put on line here i saw everybody is doing it it all started up with some guys you know as they cut here and then put some line here one line there it's all going on the craze suddenly now no more already now you don't see that so over time people like to a like to see people and do things take their ideas take their kind of attitude their behavior this is human nature we like to so we want to be very careful that we don't take things that is not desirable for jesus but rather the things of god the divine things we want to also imitate when it comes to spiritual matters so jesus tapped on that so he knew there are some guys there who like to adopt so he availed himself they all became like jesus over time this how timothy titus became like paul over time and then i think that i noticed that jesus he knew that people like to learn through examples people learn a lot through examples your family can see your children that's why parents have a responsibility they are an example to their children I'm not saying perfect parents here let me reiterate this again parents are weak vulnerable lacking and uh, but we love the lord we love jesus we want to give him all the best to him so our children they copy the father the father or the mother become the hero or the heroine because you set an example for them and people learn a lot jesus knew that you look at the ministry of jesus he knew that and he tapped on that He said he became a very effective mentor. We knew that people like to follow examples. So in the church, we got to set examples for the others to follow, to imitate. We must be daring. Don't let the devil deceive you. Yeah, we are weak, we are vulnerable, but let do the right thing in Christ and people will follow you. People will follow you. You can set an example. And let's start from the home. that we will set good examples that the children have something to follow if you're not consistent you will find the children not consistent as well if you're not diligent the children not be diligent i'm talking about spirituality here if you're not serious with god your children will never be serious with god if you don't if you don't honor the church of god you can be rest assured they'll never honor the church of god cuz they spend much time with you So we set examples. Just live out that life, and you see, over time, they just become what you are. And of course, Jesus knew that. Another thing that I can see that the way he tapped into this spec of mentoring, that he knew that people learn through experiences. So when you are mentoring somebody, experiences of your life can be shared. Iron sharpens iron. You talk to them. experience impacts your life and that impact and they don't have to go through whether it is a good experience or a bad experience when you share and mentor people it become very effective they they get moved and they drawn closer and jesus tapped in those things experiences i can go on and on and this thing you know jesus knew people can tell what people will become like by observing who they regard as their mentor do you understand what i say if you are mentoring somebody when i look at you from the outside eh, i can no one what who are you mentoring by your behavior i can see ah uh, this guy is mentoring michael jackson because they were also will dress up like that they also walk sometimes we get certain people like celebrities superstars and icon eh? we can see sometimes the people like to follow and you look at them you oh i know who is mentoring and then this tendency of uh, members becoming like the pastor very evident you go to some churches when the pastor dresses up or cuts his hair a different style all the members all cut like that and then uh, the way he dresses up the way he three piece we talk all they all become like uh, you don't have to follow me lah huh? physically don't follow me please i'm not a good example that said maybe to you but when it come to sp- we are talking about spiritual mentoring the spiritual tenacity the spiritual durability the spiritual enthusiasm the spiritual seriousness this you may this you got to 
imitate and become one. Don't go and take all the hairstyle and all these things. But people tend to always look at the outfit. That's the that they showcase that. So evidently, people follow. They talk like the pastor. Do you see that? Jesus knew that, you know. And he was very careful how he moved with people. He was very serious about what he was doing. He was very loving and gracious and merciful to people who were to be shown mercy. But those who were trying to be funny with him, he put them in their place. He will tell you, off, your father is a devil. Do you know that the snakes in their heart? This Jesus talking, I got love, no love at all. He's, he's very uncompromising. He knew. He knew them. And he meant it. But that's love. He speak to their life and tell them exactly what's happening to you. People don't like it. But we are in the business of redemption. We know that you take that path, you are going to have a massive consequences. You got to tell them. That's ministry. So mentoring is like that. When you have someone under you, you got to tell them exactly where are they pitting and where are they going wrong so that you can guide them and lead them and direct them. So I just want to leave five things with you very briefly before we end today's sermon. Keys to be an effective mentor. Number one, teach. Very simple words. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study and do your best to present yourself to God approved. A workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. A mentor must be able to teach the word of God, the word of truth. So if you want to be a mentor, then you got to be expert in the sense where you got to be skillful. You must be able to handle the word correctly because the word is so important that you handle it correctly because why? It's a double-edged sword. If you mishandle it and you start preaching false doctrines, heretical teaching, you send people to hell. From the, pulp, from the pews, they go to hell. It's a very dangerous thing. When you're handling God's word, if you want to be a mentor, to mentor somebody, you got to be able to teach the word of truth correctly, accurately. That's why meditation, maturity, then mentoring. You want to be a mentor. And I should, all of us desire to do that. That's the call there. We got to build ourselves in the word. We got to leave out that word as well. Not just know, leave it out. Apply it in your own life. Then you can become an effective teacher because a mentor must be a teacher of the word. A consistency, a diligence, very vital. Or you yourself will neglect the importance of God and you can't mentor somebody when you have such an attitude. So you got to keep yourself always strong and vibrant and excited about Jesus, passionate about Jesus. And these things comes because of the word of God. And you're able to teach the word. The word of truth. Amen church? Point number two church. Example, as I mentioned earlier. Find this in John 1, 38 and 39. And Jesus turned and saw them following him. And asked them, what do you want? They answered him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come, and you will see. So they went with him and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Now what do you find in this portion of scripture? The Lord availed himself. He did not hide himself from the mainstream. If you want to be a mentor, you should. Sometimes people are very individualistic, very private. And I grew in an environment where my pastors have no time for me. I don't know where they stay. Uh, they never invite you to the home. Uh, they never give you the handphone number to you. Uh, they're very private. And they have reasons why they do that. I'm not judging them. But they don't want to have anything to do with the members besides standing at the pulpit. After the preaching is over, they are very, they'll go back to their room and then that's it. 
you see them again next sunday if you want to see them in the in the week days you make appointment with them you got to call them the secretary call anna pastor paul i can see ha 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 i see pastor paul pastor paul will decide we got you very busy busy what going to market ha uh, going here going there going to the internet throughout the day very busy they hardly will see you they don't take time to mentor you to teach you to open up the scriptures for you i'm not being bragging and boasting lah but i don't see that a good example jesus christ our master a chief mentor did never ever did that he was always available he told them hey guys come follow me these two guys were disciples the one guy we know the other guy we don't know who is he it could be you you read this portion of scripture two of them will follow they actually the disciples of john the baptist and the lord is willing to open up himself so you want to be a mentor an example you have to that that is very very important availing yourself spending time with the people touching base with them they can talk to you anytime every time they can talk to you anything this is important because why you want to mentor them you got to be open you cannot you got to forget about your private life some people they, they they just cannot they just want to go there and become so indifferent cannot how to be a mentor you can't be a mentor jesus had us a good example and you can find that because following christ is not enough but we must follow him according to how he has shown us being transparent being yourself and i think it's very important that we will set such example taking time with somebody sitting down and talking to them about god wherever whether coffee shops anywhere you this is your mentee this god has entrusted this person to you and we got to do our part to ensure we mentor people we guide people set them on the right track for them facilitate them point number 3 church pray another thing that will be expected of you to be a mentor is to pray philippians 1 3 to 6 i thank my god in every remembrance of you always offering every prayer of mine with joy with specific request for all of you this is the heart of paul eh? to the philippian church thanking god for your participation and partnership both your comforting fellowship and gracious contribution in advancing the good news regarding salvation from the first day you heard it until now i'm convinced and confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of christ jesus the time of his return now maybe you're wondering what is this got to do with mentoring you must be a person of prayer a mentor must be able to pray in most of the time if you want to be a mentor you must pray like how paul prayed paul is simply doing this is expressing himself all that is in his heart he is expressing himself this is how you will express everything else in this light of the world and you know, sometimes we talk to people we just express everything you know we we make known to people how we feel what you think about so and so we say about it this is prayer prayer we want the holy spirit to pray through you you just you know this is what i am praying for this is what i want to express like god it must be from your heart pray in the spirit to the father in jesus name let the holy spirit do the work of prayer everything spiritual is done by the holy spirit you are just merely an instrument even your prayer life you want to be a mentor you want to pray you got to just pray but before that you must it must become your heart beat like you must mean like paul is saying really i'm convinced i'm confident of this you know very thing you know that you must begin you begin a good work and you will bring it completely yeah! all that is already in his heart and he's just expressing and that's a prayer that's coming from your heart and the holy spirit will take you through you will never embarrass you you challenge me i tell you this the holy spirit will never embarrass you or never will shame you in the midst of people he will give you the words he knows what you have he is the best person to know what you have how many vocabs you have how good your grammar is how bad your english no, no, he, he knows it all and i tell you he'll shape it up for you eh? you'll go back feeling god thank you la I didn't know I can pray like this la. I can rely on you la, I can lean on you la. You pray la. What a beautiful prayer. You yourself will know because all glory goes to you. 
God will work you out. Yeah, just how you begin to tap. So a mentor must be able to express through prayer, bringing it out from the heart. It's like the Apostle Paul is a fantastic mentor. He means, he, he really, that burdened him. He loves the Philippian church. He loves the people there. So he's praying, remembering all the time and bringing it before the Father. Are you with me, church? So prayer is very powerful. It comes from your heart, your tone, the kind of word that you use, your expression. That can change the attitude, the event, because your prayer is so powerful. Amen, church? Four, church, point number four. If you want to be a mentor, very simple words here today. Encourage. You find this in 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. Therefore, encourage and comfort one another and build up one another just as you are doing. So the element of mentoring is you got to encourage like Barnabas. Encouraging is important in mentoring. You are an agent of encouragement because people easily are discouraged in this world. At every turn, you can be discouraged in this world. So if you want to be a mentor, spiritual, divine mentor, you got to be a person who's encouraging. When they see nothing, they're all bleak and gloomy. They feel like everything is falling apart. Say, hey, Jesus is still alive. He's sitting at the throne. If you can get Jesus into your heart today, everything will change. God will give you a new life and God will open up a new horizon for you that you can walk in confidently because God will walk you through. So a mentor is always a person who is like a troubleshooter. Always encouraging. Always giving the kind of input. And I think our church, we stand for that. I do see in most of you, you have that kind of a gifting. Most of you are very encouraging. And I think you all got to rise up to another level of becoming mentors. Taking somebody that you think that are struggling or very discouraged or not really doing well. Let's start our church as a kindergarten here. We learn. Then you can take it to the world. God will bring somebody on your path. Through your encouragement, they can be converted to Christ. Then you can build them up even before bringing them to church. Building them up, you know, talking to them or WhatsApping them. You know, mentoring is not just direct. Today, we have all the technology, all the tools we have. You know, sending them a message of encouragement, being there for them at the time of need. People love that. Nowadays, in this world, people have no time for each other. But we are different. We mean, we love you for who you are in Christ. So we try to tap into their life and share with them. I think mentors have to have this criteria because you can change someone's life. And Barnabas was a son of encouragement. What did God see in his life? And we saw, demonstrated so, so many acts, when, particularly with John Mark. Now he turned that guy around and, and he extended his olive branch to him and led him and caused him to turn around for the glory of God. So it builds people up. It helps the weak. Last one, church, before we take communion. Train. Numbers 27, 15 to 17. This is the one that I quoted earlier. How Moses spoke to the Lord saying, the Lord... Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over the congregation who will go out and come in before them and will lead them out and bring them in so that the congregation of the Lord will not be as sheep without a shepherd. It's God's will that the congregation means today in the context of the church, the body of Christ, a group of people, the will of God that that group cannot go without a leader. A shepherd to lead spiritually. So, this is exactly what God spoke to Moses. And God told him, you go out there and get the right people. And you can see even Paul, he always in the book of uh, Timothy and Titus, always telling to Timothy, hey, you go and get some qualified, competent teacher, those who are faithful and approved, bring them in and guide them, lead them. Because Paul knows that, that time moves very fast. We need people who can take over and start running God's business. It's not a one-man game, a lone ranger holding on. It's not, I'm building my kingdom. We are building God's kingdom. It's a collective work. 
So church, the element of training is essential. We need to train people. We need successors. We need to have people who are willing to take the challenge and carry the ministry forward and to express themselves and do great exploits for Jesus. 